Hello, hello everyone. My name is Urvi and I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. If you are someone who's preparing to get hired as a software developer in 2024, in this video by Scalar, we'll be discussing exactly that. What are the skills required, technical and soft? What are the do's and don'ts if you want to get hired as a SD in 2024? Before we get started though, make sure to check out Scalar's free masterclasses on Scalar's event page by industry experts. Let's dive in. Let's try to first understand the current landscape of the tech industry in 2024. With the surge of AI innovation, a lot of us might have some doubts whether AI will replace the software development role. As we see AI writing good, clean, extensive code, which we did not imagine it to be writing. But it's important to understand here that software development is more than just writing code. And so companies now will not just focus on checking who has the best coding skills or who can write code for them, but they'll go one step ahead to check who can solve problems for them because that requires creative thinking, critical thinking, and that is something only humans can still do. First of all, let's touch on the core technical skills that you would require to become a software developer. Companies, the big MNC especially, they hire on the basis of DSA, where again, they don't want to check who can write the best code. Of course, that is one of their criteria, but they also try to judge the analytical thinking of the candidates, their problem solving skills, along with the coding skills. The trend is expected to majorly remain the same. So the first thing that you will need to focus on is learning DSA fundamentals. Now, you don't need to focus on learning DSA in three or four different languages. That is something that big MNCs might not look for. What they do look for is if you can solve a coding problem in only one programming language. Because there are high chances that the programming language that you are learning might not even be used in their company. So don't focus on the programming language, which programming language you're learning. Don't focus on the syntax but focus on the data structures, algorithms, fundamentals, the programming fundamentals in whatever language you're learning. Secondly, you need to practice lots and lots of programming questions along while learning DSA. A common mistake that most students do is they procrastinate practicing questions until they have completed the whole DSA course, which is the worst thing you can do while learning DSA. If you want to remember the concepts that you're learning in DSA and you want to check if you're actually understanding those concepts, you need to practice programming questions side by side for whatever topic you are learning in your DSA course. And once you've completed the course, that's when you start doing mixed DSA questions, which where you do not know which data structure or which algorithm is supposed to solve this particular problem. You need to decide that on your own. And that is what will prepare you for the technical interview or the coding contest. Because again, there, when you're faced with a coding problem, you won't know which topic this question is related to. You will have to use your own judgment to decide which data structure would be most optimized to solve this particular coding question. Apart from DSA and programming, these companies also focus on computer science fundamentals. And when I'm talking about computer science fundamentals, I'm referring to subjects like operating system, object-oriented programming, database management system, system design, and computer network. These are some four or five subjects that you really need to focus on. Now, my advice is, if you are a computer science related field student, then you might already have these subjects in your college curriculum. And the best strategy is to focus on these subjects in college when you're learning these subjects. But 
if you are someone who's from another field like EC or MA, not from the computer science field, you might not have these subjects in your curriculum and that is fine as well. You'll just need to have to put some extra work into studying these subjects on your own. Now, when it comes to studying these subjects, you're not expected to cover everything related to these subjects. It is enough to know just the fundamentals, the basic concepts of these subjects. So what you can do is refer to some YouTube videos that cover briefly these subjects. You can refer to the books that your computer science batchmates are studying in their courses. And then you can practice these subjects by solving MCQ questions, which you can easily find on Scalar website. Most of these subjects are asked in the form of MCQs when you're going for an aptitude test taken by these websites or these questions might also be asked to you in a technical interview. So now we have covered the core technical skills that you would require to learn for getting an ST job. Let's come down to the soft skills which are as crucial as the technical skills here. A lot of candidates do get rejected in the technical interviews because of lack of good communication skills. Just because they're not able to explain to the interviewer what their approach is or what they're thinking. A lot of times the approach that they're thinking in their mind, the solution that they're thinking in their mind might be right, but they're not able to put that across to the interviewer. In which case, the interviewer will definitely reject them. So you need to have good communication skills with good coding skills to successfully pass a technical interview. And not just for passing a technical interview, but even when you go into a technical job, you require good communication skills. As much as we assume it to be, an SD role is not just sitting in a corner and coding. You need to interact with your team members, your manager and other stakeholders and brainstorm solutions to coding problems or whatever problems the company is facing. So you need to have good communication skills there, good collaboration skills there and team skills so that you can work with everyone in a corporate environment. Now, a lot of times students also ask, how do we build these soft skills, especially someone who hasn't had the chance to build or improve their communication skills in school? Well, the best strategy here is to practice talking to your friends, to your batchmates. First, start with the circle of people who you are slightly comfortable with. Try to make a conscious effort to go and communicate with them and then expand that circle to include people who you might not be so comfortable with. And finally, with people who you are really uncomfortable with. If you're able to communicate with people in uncomfortable situations who you're not comfortable with, then that would mean that you have good communication skills. Another approach that you can take is try explaining coding problems or a solution to the problem or some concept to your friends and batchmates that not only will give you clarity whether you have a full understanding of the concept but also help you prepare for the technical interviews where you'll have to explain the concept or the solution to the interviewer. Now we've discussed what all skills you require to become an STE. But how do you get the chance? How do you get your foot in the door to actually showcase your skills? Now we've discussed what all skills you require to become an STE, but how do you get your foot in the door to actually showcase your skills? One, by having a very good resume. Your resume is often the first impression that you make on your potential employers. So it's very important that you draft a crisp and clear resume. First of all, the resume should not be two pages or more long. It should only be one page where all of your achievements should be highlighted, which are relevant to the role that you're applying for. You should focus on adding your education experience, work experience 
and along with that highlight what impact you had or what achievements you had while you were studying somewhere or while you were working in a place also mention briefly the relevant skills and again the relevant achievements to the role you are applying the word relevant here is very important if you are applying for 50 different jobs you might need to tweak your resume according to the job and the role or the industry in which you are applying to learn to do this the best way is to refer to the resume of people who are already in that company or in that industry in your resume especially for technical people the most important thing becomes your project section employers love to see the practical application of your skills these projects help you to showcase to the employer that you have not just mentioned these skills but you have also applied the skills that you have mentioned in the resume to practical projects and again when i talk about projects there are a lot of resumes where they just copy some project of the internet which is not advised at all because employers go through so many resumes when they are hiring people they are very quick to know what projects have been copied and what projects are unique so always try to add a unique project that makes your resume stand out so i can share an example from my own experience during my college years i worked on a project called protoje which was a mentorship app for the students of my college we created this app to connect juniors with their seniors in college for one on one mentorship in their interested fields this app was launched on google play store and downloaded by a lot of students in my college who gave me direct feedback about the product about the usage which i was able to integrate and improve my product accordingly so my suggestion is to solve a real world problem with a practical project and also have users for your project whatever you're building a website a app or something a game or something else so that you can integrate their feedback to make it even better and make your resume stand out among the pool of other candidates another important aspect in getting st opportunities is having a good online network and presence especially in this digital age if you have a good online presence which speaks about your skills your expertise your chances of getting hired or being seen by the recruiters will definitely shoot up for this i advise having an updated linkedin profile where you clearly talk about your skills your work experience because a lot of recruiters do scan for profiles on linkedin a lot of my friends also did get noticed by recruiters due to their open source contributions be as part of gsoc or just personal contributions also do add your projects on github so that it is publicly available for the recruiters to check so we've discussed what are the skills required for becoming an st technical and soft skills i discussed what all you need to do to actually get noticed by recruiters so that you get a chance to showcase your skills the last piece of puzzle is passing the technical interview which a lot of skilled coders are also not able to do at times the interview process can definitely be daunting especially for the first timers but with the right preparation it can all go good first of all you need to understand you need to know what all you can expect in a technical interview in most of the technical interviews the interviewer first asks you to introduce yourself in a minute or so so you need to have that prepare not that you need to have a script followed for introducing yourself but you need to know what all you'll cover in the first minute of the interview to highlight your skills your achievements whatever the best things about you as a candidate are that can interest the interviewer post that the interviewer can ask some basic questions related to computer science fundamentals or there will be coding one to two coding questions 
Now, in these coding questions, you should know exactly how to approach these coding questions. First of all, if you hear a new coding question, it is absolutely fine that you might not have the solution to that on the top of your head. What you need to do is take a step back, calm down, and first of all, understand the question. You need to understand what exactly the question wants you to do, what the input looks like, and what are the constraints of the problem. After that, you start thinking of a brute force approach. Brute force approach is generally the not optimized solution, which comes the first thing that comes into your mind and discuss that brute force approach with the interviewer. After that, you start thinking whether you can optimize the solution or not. It might be that the interviewer tells you to code the brute force solution or the interviewer tells you to think of a more optimized solution. Either way, while coding, do use the right practices of coding, write clean, clear code, use the right names for your variables, your functions, and always dry run your approach after writing the code. You should also discuss the time and space complexity of the solution that you're providing, either brute force or the optimized one. And then you can start having a conversation with the interviewer. By the way, when you are coding, you should not just stay silent, but also tell the interviewer what exactly you are doing, what exactly you are thinking, what exactly you are trying to do. Most of the times when candidates are stuck somewhere, interviewers do pitch in and help to point you in the right direction. So if you are not able to go somewhere, do tell the interviewer where exactly you are stuck so that they can help you. And at the end of the interview, the interviewer will ask you to ask a few questions to them. So you should also have that prepared because you can use that opportunity to showcase your interest in joining their company or whatever projects that company is building. This is the general flow that most of the technical interviews take. And the best way to prepare for technical interviews is by giving a lot of mock interviews. Especially if you are new to the interviewing process or you're not confident about uh, putting your points across, you should ask your friends, your parents, your batchmates, your seniors to take your mock interviews. And that would help you in mastering the interview process. So we discussed what all skills you require, how to get noticed by the recruiter to get an SD role, and finally, how to crack the interview, technical interview, when you get the chance. Now, this process, as simple as it sounds, it might not be in the real life. But the important thing here is to keep going and to really focus on one thing which is problem solving. The interviewers will not really focus on your coding skills as much because we'll be relying highly on AI to write our code, to write our unit tests and other things. But the problem solving aspect of the SD role is what you will be mostly judged on in the coming years. So focus on that while preparing to be an STE. And that's all for this video. All the best for becoming an STE in 2024.